Hey there, Scott here, and today I'm going to show you guys the new Colossal Bass CB2 instrument that a number of you folks have been clamoring about on my channel. We'll run through this in my trademark style and with all the timestamps in the description so that you don't get bored. And also, of course, I'd like to mention this is a review copy from Colossal Bass themselves, so I'd like to give a huge big thank you to them for allowing this video to be made in the first place. So let's just get this thing rolling, eh? Here we are at the store page, so everything you want to know about this instrument is actually here on the store page. It's uh, big props to them for getting that one right. You know, information, photos, clips, and even an interactive demo here, which I've never seen before. You can click and uh, listen to a single DI note here. That's pretty cool. Never seen that before. Looking through the information, which I will not read because that'd be ultra boring. I uh, just want to remind you, of course, that this is a contact instrument. You're going to need contact. And if you don't uh, actually have the full version of Contact, you can use the Contact Player version, even though you'll have that 15-minute limit. Not a big deal. Just load up that 15... Uh, excuse me. Not a big deal. Just go ahead and write your MIDI parts out, load up that Contact, and then bounce it out. No big problem. You don't even need the full version. So when you grab this thing, you're going to get three pre-processed tones plus the DI tone. So really, you can do anything you want. You've got a lot of options. Below that, we have some awesome testimonials. It's always good to see people enjoying the product. That's a good sign. So yeah, well done here. Very detailed, but yet concise store page at the same time. Here we are inside Studio One, and I've already got contact open with the PSA One patch, which is the patch that I used for this demo that we're going to check out in a second. CB2 is really simple to use, and all the information necessary is right here on the instrument art, which is great. So CB2 is utilized really uh, much in the same way as the Texas Grind Bass VST is used in that we're going to be using key switches. Uh, if you don't know how to use key switches, not a big deal. I've actually done a very uh, in-depth video about how to program bass key switches. You can check that out later. Here we have the humanized velocity setting, which allows us to manipulate the algorithm. Uh, basically, the algorithm will take an incoming MIDI note, and then it's going to randomly plus or minus it by whatever value you set here. So we have 10 or 7 or 12. That's what the random value would be. So for example, let's say we have it on 10. We have all of our MIDI notes at 115. Where we are randomly going to have samples either at 105 or 125. Pretty simple and straightforward, but a really neat feature of this instrument. Over here where it says instrument mode, now with the key switches here, this will tell us which instrument mo mode we are using. So if we're in either down picking or alternate picking or sliding up or sliding down, we're going to know based on this little window here, it'll tell us. Now with the alternate picking algorithm, we have uh, a milliseconds meter here that we can set specifically uh, to tell the program, hey, don't start doing alternate picking strokes until the space between each note is this length. Really awesome, and it actually reminds me of the Metal Massive Bass VST instrument that I looked at a while back. Again, I'm a big fan of this because it helps the bass sound more realistic. Now here on the bottom, we just have a nice sweet picture of the bass and the name of the patch that we're using. I'd also like to point out that there is a nine-page manual that is very detailed, and it shows you how you can program speed-adjustable slides and use the MIDI pitch bend wheel on your MIDI device to do bends. So with that said, let's see how this thing sounds in a mix. Quick and dirty, uh, I chose the PSA 1, like a third time I said that now, because it's, it was the most distorted of all the tones, and I just thought it'd be kind of funny to have like an ultra chainsaw bass tone for this particular demo. The guitars are my Ibanez 7 string, uh, the standard E with the drop A, with my DI box going to the focus right 2A2, it's always the same single chain. Drums are all Metal Factory Studio samples, and yeah, so let's check this out. I don't know if you can get any more brutal than that. I think that's pretty brutal, and the bass really holds it down. Uh, so let's go ahead and listen to the bass just by itself. I'm going to leave all the processing on. And actually, I'm doing the same exact processing that I actually showed you guys in a video a while back, which you can check out as well.
So my opinion, you know, basically we're getting to the point now where folks are getting really good at programming MIDI bass instruments. I previously was really digging the bass of the gods, and I still do, and I still probably put that in my number one position. But man, I really have to hand it to uh, Colossal Bass. The PSA-1 is awesome. I really like it. It probably will be my go-to for any redonkulous chainsaw bass tones that I want to do. And honestly, I would consider $40 very affordable. And considering that this comes with, you know, three to excuse me, three tones, uh, a DI so you can make your own tone. You know, you have a full range of notes down to E0. Uh, you can do multi sampled uh, excuse me, you have multi sample slides that you can change the tempo of. Um, that's pretty awesome. So I really don't see how a guy could go wrong if they wanted to grab this instrument. So that does it for me. Thanks again to Eric from Colossal Bass for allowing me to make this video. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. If the video was helpful, consider a like rating and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.